Oh! So you're really getting that like... No. Oh! Oh my... <laughs> hey guys and Welcome to GT Not Live, where today we are back on the couch with a huge announcement. The FNAF movie may or may not be getting made. Uh, as of Twitter this morning, last night, late last night, there was a big announcement that the FNAF... <laughs> they're like, hey, the FNAF movie, it still exists, and it's starting to film in February of 2023, and we got a director now, which, on one hand... The internet, like, rejo like collectively rejoiced, and my Twitter feed just blew up with, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's trending, but also people being like, MatPat, we in the movie, guest star MatPat, whatever. Thank you, by the way, I, I, I appreciate that. I think I would make a good unhinged serial killer, because I think that's what I am deep down inside. Uh, and I just study all this stuff to cover my tracks. Uh, please don't use that against me at any point in the future. Uh... <laughs> If you if you've watched uh, the FNAF Random Encounters musicals, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I, I or honestly the Markiplier stuff too. I tend to play unhinged character like characters who like lose it and lose it big uh, in terms of you know just like going off the handle. And I and I feel like because so much of my life is like I am good and in this box, being able to like let loose and unhinge is always really satisfying for me. Um, so playing you know deranged serial killers seems like right up my alley. It's great. So anyway, uh, but yeah, so the FNAF movie is a, a thing. So on one hand, everyone's like, woo, the FNAF movie's a thing. On the other hand, I, I think it's kind of funny because I, I feel like this whole time there's been this assumption that the FNAF movie was happening or had been filmed or was in the process of being filmed. Like, they're like, or had a director. It's, it's like had a director three or four separate times, it feels like. And so when they're like, and we got ourselves a director, it's like, okay. Also weird that they started the animatronics before having a director, maybe? I like The order of events of this whole sequence seems strange to me. <laughs> Where they're like, oh yeah, it's, it's definitely happening, it's definitely happening. You know, and Scott's like, here's all these scripts from like a couple years ago. And, you know, Jason Blum over on Twitter, uh, head of Blumhouse Productions, who is in control of uh, the FNAF movie at this point. You know, what was it, like a month or two ago, tweeted out like, the the animatronics being worked on and, and this and that and so I, I thought like it's been worked on but without a director involved I don't know here's the thing traditional production Hollywood production whatever like do your stuff <laughs> just I'm like the, the announcement is like cool okay but like you know <laughs> it's like five years too late friendos at this point and we have a theory coming out about this I think I have to decide what my next FNAF theory is, because there's two coming out of the most recent book. They might, I might fuse them into one, I don't know. But, but the long and short of it <laughs> is basically that where the series is now, here in the year 2022, all the old lore of the games has largely been thrown out. And this is canonical. Uh, or at least if you look at the series of, I, I, it's canonical through the lens of both the books and the games, where in FNAF VR, there's this whole plot line about, like, there's, you know, FNAF VR was made, or all those old games were made by a rogue indie developer, you know, inspired by the events of the rumors of Five Nights at Freddy's or whatever, and of, of serial killings that happened at the pizzeria. And so that rogue indie developer, so, and then disclaiming, like, the first four games and, like, the lore that was contained in there it falls into this questionable canonicity of like, well, it, it's kind of real, but also kind of not. There were real events, but maybe not. Like, I, at this point in the books, they fully acknowledge that. And so in a lot of ways, the if there was ever a question about what things were true and false in the timeline before, there's even more so now because not even the games are accurate depictions of what happened. And so ba the, the TLDR of all of this, and I'll explain it better in the theory, I hope, but like where my head's at right now is like, yeah, they just took like the first four games and yeeted them out the window. And they're like, you know what? Those four games, they, they might be canon. They might not be canon. But anyway, woo, throw them away. And so now we get ourselves a movie that's like, hey, remember those things? 
Those were canon at one point. Let's let's do the story about those. It's like, well, you know, you missed the boat on that one. Unless unless we're unless there is an appearance of Fazgu, you are like seven years too late, friendos. Um, so long story short, I'm excited about it. I'm interested to see what happens with it. At the very least, I would hope, I would hope that uh, Blumhouse would allow or like reach out to you know, the docos and us and Markipliers and stuff of the world. Not not necessarily to be in the movie. Like, it would be cool if they were and if we could have a cameo or like a dead guy in background or whatever. Um, but more so just to, like, watch the process. Like, I'd love to, like, just watch a day of filming. Like, I think that would be fun. Because um, I've done a lot of shoots at this point. I've been on a lot of sets. I've been on a lot of productions. You know, being in a Mr. Beast video is literally being in, like, one of the biggest productions you will ever see. Um, which was, it's always really exciting and really cool. Um, but it's also one of those things where to see like an actual, I, I don't, I don't think I've actually seen a full on movie. I've done Markiplier's, you know, uh, original series, which are really awesome, but also different than a movie. Uh, you have the, you have like, like I said, the Mr. Beast stuff, which is I mean huge scale, but also a very different value proposition than like you know, an actual movie movie. Probably the closest I've gotten is, like, YouTube originals stuff. Um, you know, and some of the some of the more scripted stuff that they've done. So, that would be cool. I don't know. We'll see. But now that there's a director announced, and now that they're filming in t- February 2023, it'll be interesting to see if there is any sort of, like, give and take with, with the creator community. So, fingers crossed. Anyway, in the meantime, who needs a FNAF movie? Because we've got ourselves uh, the Baddington VHS tapes. Uh, we reacted to these a week or two ago. And, uh, we, st- we got like halfway through the series. Uh, and again, as a reminder, I've never seen these before, but basically, uh, Baddington, amazing creator, has given life to all these like old found footage VHS tapes of the Fazbear characters. And, uh, they're horrific. They're terrifying. The level of detail found in them is, is incredible. Uh, and so we're gonna finish, hopefully finish watching them today. Uh, I think we have the time to do that. So that's the plan. That's, so that's it. Long story short. Uh, real quick, as we kick things off here, you'll see that I'm sporting some of our uh, merch from earlier this year. We're clearing out the shelves right now, uh, so there's some good deals uh, really happening over the next couple weeks. So keep an eye out for Creator Inc. Uh, link is in the description below. But like, for instance, this jacket, this like little quilted uh, jacket, I think if, you, if you're doing it on the right time, it like it's on sale for like 40 bucks. Uh, and it's usually like 70 or 80. So like there's, there's some really big savings that are going on as we just kind of like clear out some of the older stock make way for some of the new stuff that's coming in for christmas um so now's a great time to pick like i think the shirt's available i think some of this stuff is so go check it out if you're interested um i mean i, I love this stuff uh you know it's really high quality and it's it's a great deal right now so go check that one out and uh and without any further ado let oh you you mentioned something that i should check out ash in at the end because i noticed a lot of comments were calling it out remind me what it was again Yes, so we might have a spring Bonnie appearance or a little sighting, sp- a little alert, woo, woo, a little spring trap moment. So he always comes back. He he do be always coming he, he, back. He do be always. So I pulled up here um, uh-huh. around this moment in sound response check. Okay. Um, and you'll see that when Chica fully opens the stall door, yeah, you can see little little golden ears peeking up over. Oh, really? Yeah. Thing here, so it's like right around here. Mm-hmm. You're scaring me. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh, cr- oh weird. Yeah, there they are, the little golden bunny ears. Huh. So, so are people saying that that's Spring Bonnie? Like that's Afton? Yeah, like it might be. Huh. Might be him, but you know, this might change Chica's motivations. During right. I, scene. Yeah, I was actually going to say that that does change it a lot because it goes from, I mean, Chica just being like random, not random, but like animatronic on the loose going to get children, you know, which possessed spirit on the rampage kind of thing to she's working with Spring Bonnie. That's weird. Like, because you always, I mean, for me personally, as I think way too much about this way too often uh, in, in my day to day life. <laughs> no exaggeration. Like, when I think about Spring Bonnie and the haunted animatronics, right? Like, I think of them as, like, diametrically opposed forces, right? At no point are they really teaming up to accomplish the same goal. Even if you read the books, again, the books, oh my gosh, the books. Um, When you read the books, 
there is, you know, the the animatronics, the haunted ones, are like Chica and Bonnie and that original group. They're depicted as chaotic, you know, like chaotic neutral almost. Like they're they're, they're doing harm, right? Because they're attacking things and like kind of making a general mess. But they're they're this kind of like chaotic force that aren't really good they're not really evil they're just like confused spirits who are like lashing out right they're they're full of all this got like rage and agony and and this and that they're just kind of lashing out at the world around them whereas afton right is just like a force for evil um he in later books and kind of in later narratives he's actively trying to harness the power of the souls to to create animatronics that do his bidding you know and that's where like uh, the fun times kind of get involved at that point um and in the books it, it, it you see him actively like doing experiments with remnant to create things that he can then control and do but to see like a possessed animatronic with spring body yeah, i'm see i'm circling in that's that's it it's playtime <laughs> i feel like i need like the game day so if this chica over here is co- collectively fusing forces with this spring body over here they're gonna charge forward and they're gonna broach the stall it's, uh, it's my knowledge of sports commentary. Right Do you there. think the stall door is the line of scrimmage? Oh, they're cro- uh, that's the end zone right it's there. The end zone. That's that's the the, the red zone. They're Ooh. they're in the red zone. Oh, they At are. this point, you better be making a touchdown or kicking a field goal because there ain't no more first downs available. Could yeah, you, could do uh... some foot sports theory. But hey, that's just the sport. Touchdown! <laughs> that's it. <laughs> You know, it's funny. Our audience and our demographic is so far removed from sport. I've wanted to do sports theory forever. Um, that was actually one of the early ones that I wanted to do. Um, and in all the speculation about what the final final part of the wheel is or whatever uh, for the theory channels is, I don't think I've ever seen anyone guess sports theory. Even though to me, that seems like a slam dunk. Like, oh, sports science? <laughs> Real world research about sports and physics and mechanics and you know, there's so many sports conspiracy. Like, sports theory is a slam dunk, pun fully intended. Um, I think it's great. The problem is uh, getting footage or talking about teams in any sort of way. We had talked to the the leagues and all, all the, like, necessary rights holders to try and, like, make that sort of thing happen. <laughs> no. They're, they're like, oh, you could do it, but we will own everything that you you touch. And they're like, ah, that, that doesn't work. Because, uh, you know. It takes a lot of work to do this stuff. Um, so, or we could just not show anything on screen and just, like, talk. Hey, so that, that play in that game from 1993, that was a good one. Imagine, if you will, the following. Um, but, yeah, sports theory. That's that's always one that I wanted to do. Uh, but similar to music theory, just never really worked. Um, cool. All right. Good good call, guys. I, I can't believe I missed that, but I was also pretty obsessed with the giant attacking chicken laughing maniacally in my direction so here we go so uh chica the small girl screams glitches out her hearing she has to be fixed but we know at the end that uh the the mask she gets unmasked similar to dream face reveal (laughs) chica face reveal over here chica unmasked here we go right eat your heart out should I reveal my face? Should I reveal my face? Whoa! <laughs> there it is. So that's that's the face reveal that broke the internet. Um, face reveals all over the place. So exciting. Uh, masks coming off left, right, and center here in the YouTube community. Uh, let's hop over to Give a Life now. This is where we left things off. Here's new stuff. So I would assume Puppet, who, in the hands of a creator like Baddington, is going to be horrific. And is great. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Oh! So you're really getting that, like... Oh! Oh, my... (laughs) That was effective. That's good. Again, it's simple, but just the pace, man. So cool. Because it's so slow. You don't expect. You don't expect that huge ramp up at the end. Oh, 
off and it's oh and he runs at me oh that's cool that he like pops out the 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 motion of this is wild <laughs> Woo! spaghetti arms don't mind me i'm just mr spaghetti arms Ahoy! Oh, and it's and it's literally like three frames but man that is effective uh real quick i do a this is, I mean, this is always kind of how I've envisioned the puppet. Like, the idea of a security puppet who runs around the anima, the, first off, who is this thing protect? Like, it's, what, what are you doing, Fazbear Entertainment? Like, what, what world are you living in where this is the security device that runs around your, like, family fun time pizzeria? Because on one hand, it's like, Am I gonna, what's, what's this small little like stick figure gonna do if I'm creating a, a ruckus in your pizzeria restaurants? Like, what are you gonna do, stick figure character? On the other hand, though, if, it, if he looks this intimidating and scary, then it's like, what child is ever gonna want to come here because I'm being stared at by like the scream mask the entire time? Or like, this is like ripped out of poltergeist. So, which is it, Fazbear? Because <laughs> neither option is working here for me. Yeah, would would you do crime? I, Ash, I know you you regularly do crime. Would yes. you do crime in the presence of this thing? Um, I would crime against that thing. Ooh, cr ooh you would commit crime against it. Yeah. Ooh, crime against. Yeah. Wow. That's not. It is not going to stop me. <laughs> it's not going to stop you. Just there's right? no, there's <laughs> no muscle buildup on that thing. No, no spaghetti arms, man. Nah. Uh, right. Break it like a toothpick. Yeah. Just yank it, pull it, swing it around. <laughs> you make that thing into a jump rope. Yeah. Shows what you know, you weirdo puppet thing. Get out of here. No one like Mar Mary Marionettes are so useless to begin with. Because right, it's 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 the marionette. It's not just a puppet, it's specifically a marionette on strings, at least in its early iterations, before it became like super high tech and blah blah blah. But like as depicted in FNAF 2, it is a marionette. And marionette, oh no, we have a marionette. Uh Steph inherited a marionette as a kid. And so we we've played with it. We tried to play with it with Ollie. The things get tangled up like nobody's business. I mean, unless you are very carefully like winding the coils or like very gently like laying them out to the side. That thing's getting, there's a gust of wind. That thing is useless. Oh no, I'm all twisted up and now my arm's over here. <laughs> useless, absolute garbage. Terrible design, Fazbear Entertainment. But I guess, what am I looking at? You know, who, who are we talking to at this part in the series anyway? I'm saying this to the like animatronic murder restaurant. Next up. Ahoy me mateys! It wow! Foxy came to play today! It be your favorite swashbuckling buccaneer! Foxy, the pirate fox! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he feels, I don't know, he feels like a slower version of like a... Like a like a modern day YouTuber on it. <laughs> Yay, mateys! You are gonna love today's show! Today you are gonna like and you are gonna subscribe! Okay, you don't have to like shout everything in my face. I get it. It's okay. It's gonna be just chill out a little bit if I die dial it just a little bit back. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> when I tell ya Also as as scripted and organic as a as, as a modern day YouTuber too. <laughs> Got a grand show for you today in just about 10 minutes. Wait, 10 minutes? That's right, 10 minutes. <laughs> Let me check my invisible watch. It's fine. It's all good. There was a comedian, I forget who did this one, where it's like the, the classic comedian who's like, why do people point at their wrist when they're asking for the time? Because you don't like point at other, like, hey, can I go to the bathroom? Like, bathroom. I need, like, I, I get it. I understand what a bath. I know what the time. Can you can you check this thing on? Where, where's the time? Right. Where's the bathroom right now? That's what I need. Ten minutes. Why we better gather our gear before time runs out. Oh, and I've got to prep my singing voice. La 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 la. Bonnie, make yourself useful and mop the stage, will you? Oh, whatever you say, Mister Boss Man. <laughs> so. I know that there's, um, <laughs> it's great. Whatever you say, Mr. Boss Man. Um, 
you know, I know that they there are voices of the characters, right? There's a whole song and dance that was meant to be programmed into FNAF VR and then wasn't because Scott wasn't really... I think I believe the story goes he wasn't really happy with the the voice lines or he he was happy with them but he didn't feel comfortable like canonizing how the original like animatronics sounded or whatever. It is always really funny but you you fall into these territories, right? Where you hear these characters speaking and you're like, "Does that voice fit?" Like I think for for some of these they they roughly translate to what I would think. Like Chica's roughly kind of what I expect. Foxy is a bit more aggressive, uh, but like, and I'd make him more pirate. I would lean him more into piratey. Uh, Freddy, I'm not surprised. Kind of like country, uh, southern feel. Uh, Bonnie, though, I've never thought about what Bonnie would sound like. I don't think Bonnie would sound like this. I, I especially as a guitarist, I would think of more like surfer dude or whatever. But I mean, this is also relevant because we have the Mario movie trailer that is as we're filming this coming out like today. Right, and so, boo! You hear Chris Pratt's Mario, but again, like, there's such a, t- it's it's so tricky to like find the right like casting for these characters who have all this built up, you know, emotion and connection and fandom, and it's like, oh, what are they going to sound like? And so, it'll be interesting to see if the animatronics talk again. Going back to the movie and the announcement of the FNAF movie, it'll be interesting to see if they talk. I would assume not, right? Like, and I think that's probably the smart decision there um i don't know maybe but then you got to show you got to show a normal a a point of normalcy at the at the pizzeria so you need to show them on stage performing at some point like chuck e cheese so i think so maybe you do have to give them a voice yeah but then like at night when they start moving that's when it's all just like the creepy weasel Maybe that'll be my cameo. Maybe I could be the wheeze voice for Freddy. Playing the role of wheezing Freddy, Matt Pat. See, there it is. That's an ad scene. I'd like to see, like, it cuts you. It's like you're doing, like, an interview kind of style yeah. where you have, like, that, like, random color backdrop. And it's like, yeah, I didn't have albuterol for, like, 55 days. To prepare for this role. <laughs> I have not I have not drinking a liquid for the last month. <laughs> this is just what it sounds like. I've been living in the desert for the last year, trying to get ready for this role. It's what like Jared Leto would do. <laughs> I'm playing the hoarse voice of an undead child in an animatronic. What will I do? <sighs> so thirsty. So thirsty. It's like a completely regular voice in the interview, too. It's like, you know, my doctor recommended a nebulizer, but I declined it. <laughs> yes! Twice. <laughs> also, I, I mentioned this a couple times, right? Like, Ollie and I do the, like, what voices you can do at night sometimes. He's been practicing that version of his voice, like the inhale, like, raspy voice. He's getting good at it. Uh, hello, Daddy! It's me, Ollie! He's getting pretty good. Like, he's he's practicing. So, yeah, I'm, I'm training my child to be... <laughs> You know, <laughs> scary child voice out of FNAF, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's just, you know, kids latch on to weird things. Okay, here we go. Anyway, the voices. A useful limb off the stage. Also, last thing. The, you don't have to cut to me. Please don't. They've seen enough of my face already. We need to watch the series. Uh, <laughs> but this is real quick. It's just the fact that, like, Freddy just bossing everyone around, man. You know, I feel bad for Bonnie. He's, he's got to tune up his guitar. What do you got, bud? You just got to sing. Um, look at those teeth, too. Whoa. Chompers. Look at the sun. Oh, I mean, <laughs> it goes without saying. <laughs> absolutely horrific. Anytime you're giving the sun and moon a face, absolutely horrific. Hence why uh, Security Breach probably did. Will you? Whatever you say, Mr. Boss Man. Just try not to slip, Cotton Tail. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> <laughs> The sort of humor that you get out of these places. Hey! Will you landlubbers stop mucking around? Anyway, you... He's like, you know, I'm gonna be like 10% pirate, 90% shout. Hey! I'm a pirate! Pirates shout everything! Do I sound more piratey to you now? No, no, you're just loud. You're just peeking the microphone. Please stop. Skellywags, just be here in time for the show. Not a moment before, and not a moment later, you hear? Or else you'll be forced to walk the blank! <laughs> okay. Thanks.
I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm waiting for it. Uh, it's beacon. It's good. He's got a little stage fright. Oh, Foxy, go, go, go! Classic callback to FNAF 2 minigame. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, right. I don't. I, I know. I know the Foxy Go 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 minigame, so I know where this is going. Right, I know where this is Go Go Going. But it doesn't even have to get there. These kids and the uncanny valley where their faces and bodies currently sit right now is all the horror that I need in my life. <laughs> my night has just been fueled with nightmares because of literally just this image. Ahoy, me, me, Oh, we're doing the whole thing. It be your favorite swashbuckling buccaneer. We're doing the full Foxy, Foxy Go Go. The pirate fox. <laughs> when I tell you, we got a grand show for you today in just about 10 minutes. Bath, make sure you go to the minutes, bathroom before the show starts, kiddo. 10 kiddos. minutes. Can you bloody believe it? 10 minutes? Why, we better gather our gear before time runs out. Oh, and I've got to prep my singing voice. No. La, 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 la. Were you the voice actor for Chica, Ash? Because I feel like I've heard you do that exact voice almost every day we do a shoot. I'm, um, I'm offended. Are you? I... Well, you do, you do, You know what I'm talking about. You mean by this voice? Yes! <laughs> See, there it hey. is. Uh, Audition what? auditioning for the role of Chica in the upcoming FNAF. You've got the cast. Hey, will you lend lovers stop mucking around? Please, please stop anyway, with your aggression. You scallywags. <laughs> Every time I feel attacked by his show. voice. Not a moment before and not a moment later, you hear? Right. Or else you'll be forced to walk the blank. I like that the closed captions, I'm assuming these are auto-generated closed captions and not actual ones. I like that every time that this is going to repeat, they're going to miss the word. <laughs> okay, Foxy, go, go, go! See, he's just running away. He's like, I'm scared! They tried! No! What do we got going on here? Hmm. Is that, Fo is that Foxy's face? Yeah. Yeah, because, oh, you see the pirate strap. The pirate, yeah, that's what they call it, the pirate strap. <laughs> I see you wearing your pirate strap. Not eye patch. No, certainly not. <laughs> you have your jock strap. Which goes in a very different place. The pirate strap. <laughs> this is a silly day. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hooray! Ten minutes! Can you bloody believe it? Ten minutes? Why, we better gather our gear before time runs out. Oh, and I've got to prep The my movement of these voice. animatronics, can I just say? La, 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 I mentioned this before, like the difference between the live action Bonnet, characters and the make yourself robots. useful and mop the stage, will you? Oh, hello. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. Useful and mop the stage, will you? Oh, Bonnie's having a bad day. <laughs> Bonnie had a bit of a bender last night. Just try not to slip, Cottontail. Jeez. Hey, uh, will you oh. lend lovers stop mucking around? Mm. Anyway. You scallywags, nice, like, just I, be here in time big, for the show. It was a big show. gig last night. Some of my not friends were from out of town. Before, and not what a moment you. later, you hear? Or else you'll be forced to walk the plank. Walk the bl you walk that plank. Oh. Oh, Keep weird. Blank. Right, walk the plank. Yeah. Blank. Walk, walk the plank. Uh, I don't know if this is a weird graphical. Uh, maybe it's just a graphical thing. Uh, I, I just noticed down here, it looked like there were strings. Doing a little wibbly wobbly, but it looks like that's just like uh, a weird graphical thing that's happening. Not a moment before, and not a moment later. With the planks of wood, or else you'll I was be just forced misinterpreting it. To walk the plank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. It's it's just the planks of wood wobbling back and forth because of the VHS uh, blur. 
Oh, man. Who's it going to be this time? Chico, right? Oh, yum, 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 yum. I've got a human child stuffed into my face. Oh, dear. It's going to really ruin my singing voice. I love this part. That's my favorite part of the show. When I tell you, we got a grand show for you today in just about 10 minutes. Ten minutes. Wait. 10 minutes? That's right. 10 minutes. Can you bloody believe it? Oh, Fred. Oh, oh, oh. I'm assuming. I'm assuming he's so censored down here because he's just too bloody, right? Like, on one hand, I could see them censoring because, like, you can actually see the, like, twisted, like, torso of a child stuffed into him or whatever. Um, but, again, like, in my mind, how this physically works, right, is they're, like, shoved into there. So you wouldn't be actually be able to see the kid. But maybe, yeah, he's all, like, bloody and stuff. The eye, So the eyeballs... Oh, yeah, it's definitely human eyeballs at this point. Because see how his eyes are well, blue. Better... And now they're brown. And, I mean, bleeding, certainly. But, yeah, you see the transition of, like, oh, it's a human. Human's been shoved in there now. Oh, and I got a per was there anything interesting there? Oh, okay, it was just a transition. Oh, and I got to prep my singing voice. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why did it shrink? <laughs> interesting that she turns purple. <laughs> Which, she turns purple, and the reason... I, so this is interesting. Again, the, the different canon of this, this goes back to what we started talking about and what you guys called out in the comments, is if Chica is somehow in cahoots, or Chica's working alongside um, Afton, Right, like her being purple as it glitches actually would make a lot of sense. Um, whereas otherwise you'd be like, why would one of the haunted animatronics or one of the animatronics that's going to have a kid stuffed into him be purple? But here it might indicate that, yeah, Chica is kind of like the weapon of Spring Bonnie, like we saw at the end of Soundcheck. That's, that's really interesting. Or at the beginning of Soundcheck, I guess it was. So it flashes a bunch of times here. It does, And it does move. Like the size of the sensor changes, but it, I, I think that's just like a consistency thing. I'm not seeing any difference between them. Hey! Will you landlubbers stop mucking around? Anyway, you scallywags, just be here in good. time I like this for a lot. the show. This is, this is it. This is the fact, really. Before, and not a moment later, you hear? Or else you'll be forced to walk the bl- Nope. Oh, it was a big night! <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them oh, small child, get out of there, please. Please run away, small child. Ahoy, me, mateys! It be your favorite trash buggling. This is like our computer trying to play Hello Foxy, Neighbor 2. The pirate fox! <laughs> Too graphically I tell intense. You, we got a grand show for you today in just about 10 minutes. Wait. Minutes, buffer, buffer, you, buffer the footage. <laughs> I love that it still follows the same pattern, though. It's it's so smart. Oh, Ch Chica had herself a big meal. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm stuffed. I ate too much, kid. <laughs> Jeez. Well, especially if two kids disappeared, did they both get shoved into Chica, or is one in her cupcake? I love the sound. It's so unsettling. Hey! Will you land lover stop? Viewing of this tape is prohibited. Discard it immediately. Viewing of this tape is prohibited. Discard it immediately. Viewing of this tape is prohibited. Discard it immediately. That scares me the most. I got to tingle up my... This... This is the sort of stuff, the, like... Because you... Again, you know the narrative of this. You know, like, largely what... Where it's going to go. But when something like this happens, that kind of throws off what you expect. And it's... It's more meta. 
and and especially I, I think this is one of the reasons siren head became such a thing because like those tornado warnings or those like emergency alert broadcasts are so jarring and so scary and so viscerally upsetting when you're a kid even as an adult like they just inter- they come out of nowhere and they they interrupt everything you're doing it's so like it, it, every time it like gets me to like have that tingle down my spine or whatever and so watching this i'm like okay and they're gonna reset it again and then we're gonna see foxy or maybe there's like one big final jump scare or whatever but to see it like interrupt like this and like you're not allowed to watch this it, i feel called out and violated in a way that none of the other stuff does so this is actually the moment that like got me to like have that like actual chill down my spine that and also maybe it's just my super ego talking my super ego being like follow the rules and it's like you're not allowed to watch this I'm like no i'm sorry it's for the content viewing of this Wait, it's even it's in discard it immediately. Viewing of this Oh yeah, he is. Oh yeah, there he is. Oh gross. It's gross. This series is dark, man. Five Nights at Freddy's. We make fun of it a lot. We meme on it. Oh What's the matter, Foxy? I thought you wanted an audience. Oh! Oh, Spring Bonnie. What have I done? My career is over. Oh, that... What? <laughs> no thanks. I'm good, thanks so much. Whoa, that went wild at the end there. So... <sighs> feel good entertainment like i was saying this this series in th- in theory when you're not seeing it it's like kind of fun and memeish. but when you actually like think about like what's what's actually going on it, it gets and when you see like uh, shows or fan creations that are like no let's let's actually like dive into like what would physically be happening here it's bodies are being shoved into suits like it's that's not pretty it's bad um interesting uh, yeah, Foxy wanted an audience, not not dead bodies shoved into suit. Like, they're not watching him, they're performing. With- now he has to share the stage with more people? That's like the antithesis of what a diva like Foxy wants. You missed the point, man. But it is interesting that his ears here are floppy, as opposed to upright, which they were behind the, the bathroom stall. I don't know if that changes anything, if, like, one's in animatronic mode, one's in suit mode, whatever. But I am noticing that, like, them being up, or are they remote controlled, whatever... But it is interesting. This, this, this feels very, all. Uh, it's, it's funny to see all the, a, the analog horror stuff merge together. Um, or like comment on each other or like see them in close proximity and react to them in close proximity. Cause on one hand, these are the puppet masks, or at least this one feels very puppet masky with the tears and the sad crying kids and stuff, which is riffing on imagery that we see in the game. Um, but the contortion of the face. <laughs> Like, this especially feels very Walton Files-y. It also feels very Mandela catalog Like, basically any time you're taking a person's face and doing, like, vertical stretch or, like, transform, you're getting, you're getting some terrifying results, man. And then, he, of course, you got Foxy. And it's interesting now he's in his, his more withered form where you start to see the wear and tear on him. Like, what is Foxy's role here? Because we saw him bloody over here. So is he entering the back to be stuffed? And this is just uncanny. I don't know what to make of, of Golden Freddy. Like, is he... It might be worth grabbing that audio and slowing it down to see what he's singing or saying. I did notice the two different colored buttons. That's unusual. Um, again, not exactly sure what that means. 
I mean, initially it's like, no, don't. Like, I, I feel like on one hand, Golden Freddy's trying to stop what's going on. Or it's a, it's a, maybe it's the, a spirit, like, bringing the suit to life for the first time. And this is, like, the first time that someone's... Like, but you have the puppet reveal and give life. So maybe this is that, right? The first instance of, you know, the puppet gave gifts, gave life to this guy right here. And this is him, like, trying to get control of his body, almost. Not 100% sure. It's unsettling, though, to see. Again, like, the the ebb and flow of timing of this is really solid. And I, I, I want to definitely call that out for anyone who's, like, ever creating horror. You know, that idea of, like, very slow to, like, fast. Again, it keeps you unsettled because the rhythm of it is keeping you off balance. And so the rhythm of this, where it's, like, very slow, very slow to like, Phew! oh, here we go. And we're off to the races and then like lures you back and like slams the brakes on. And now you're into this slow period again. It's it's very effective. Non-existent video. <laughs> Clearly it exists. Hello, oh, Fred Bear's Family Diner. Oh. Welcome to the mascot costume assembly training table. Oh yeah, please. Teach me about Fred Bear's. There are two types of suits. Fred Bear and Bonnie Bond. There are two types of suits. Fred Bear. So it does it does have five fingers, which uh Golden Freddy at the end of the last one did have. It's the same buttons, so it is the same. And Bonnie Bun. Bonnie Bun. <laughs> yeah! I wish it like anime anime girl style. Ah! And there his ears are up, I guess. These suits double as both animatronic suits and wearable costumes for performers. Efficient and eliminate That's cool. Costumes for I mean, again, efficient and eliminate. I, I commented on this briefly the last time, but here, I mean, you see it back to back, right? The difference between fluid motion versus robotic motion, and like the like having to shift back into place. So again, the level of detail just unreal. So so strong. It's any differences in appearance as to not break the immersion. That's interesting too. Uh, the different eyes. Um, and I don't know if this is going to come into play as we, as the series goes on. I don't know how much he's planning on, on continuing the series, what have you, but it's interesting that in animatronic mode, his eyes are, you know, smaller, uh, smaller, uh, like cornea and pupils and stuff, uh, kind of like the lidded, his, his eyelids are hanging down. Whereas here, it's just that like bright Mickey Mouse aware and awake. So that could actually help identify as we're looking at these tapes or whatever, like, wh what mode is it in at any given point in time. The wearable costumes will only be used when an animatronic is in repair. <laughs> Sing it, Bonnie. Sing it, bud. Ooh, that's cool. Oh, that was super cool. So that's presumably Afton, hence the, the purple coloring and him being backstage. By the happy birthday song. So I, I noticed that in, in the, the storage warehouse back here that I'm like, what are what are these animatronic heads? Like are they are they meant to be the, no, because this is the bunny heads. And this is a Freddy head, so like what are those? And it looks like it's it's this, which is weird. But I don't know, like is this just meant to be a shell of itself? Oh, and there's the I did I missed that the first time the split face uh, sister location style. 
to capture face. The suit is made up of three layers. The first layer is a fabric costume that we only see. Excellent. The second layer is a fiberglass shell that forms the structure of the character. Oh! The third layer is an exoskeleton. This layer is the closest to your body when being worn. Oh, weird! So you're inside of the exoskeleton? Whoa, that's crazy! It will help support all the weight of the heavy components. That's and cool. is responsible for holding all the spring locks. Hey! Oh, uh, it's it's cool to see some... Again, one of those things where, like, the logistics of a lot of this world... You're like, oh, spring locks! Yeah, that's that's a thing, and you say them, say and you, like, have a rough understanding of, like, how it works. That's cool, so, this, so they, like, lock out, but then they're gonna, like, dig in. Spring locks it's cool to see that it hold all the springs used to attach to the animatronic. However, these springs can be very dangerous if the suit is not prepped carefully. Now, let's begin the training. All right, let's let's learn. Let's learn, friends. How do to I not the inhale myself? Into suit mode, we shall start by winding up all the spring locks with a hand crank. This Insert crank. the hand crank into the lock sockets located behind the animatronic. There are 10 lock sockets in total. Oh. Two yeah. on each limb, one on the back of the body, and one behind the head. Mm. Next, remove the gloves and feet. Cool. Whoa. Find me a drink first. You'll need Mr. to VHS remove the head narrator. before taking off the costume. Simply remove the head as well as a fiberglass structure underneath. Oh, wild. <laughs> then, peel Logistics off the fabric cool. costume. Once removed, you'll need to detach the fiberglass shell from the exoskeleton. This is elaborate, man. Last. I feel like this is the sort of stuff that, like, you know, Lockheed Martin or <laughs> some sort of, like, government contract would be like, hey, can you design us, like, a robotic army? Not, not. Hey, we're a we're a podunk little town pizza restaurant that's looking to conquer globally bit by bit. I think this adds a lot of perspective to when Afton was trying to like, you know, scurry into the um, spring lock suit, yeah. <laughs> where he's like, ah, oh my god, these kids are gonna get me. Let me just remove the fabric of the of the hands <laughs> and the feet, and then you know we'll get the body, and then we'll take off the fiberglass, right. and then. You know, we'll get into here, reapply, and, right. and they won't catch me that yeah, way. Yeah, in FNAF 3, it's literally like he's being run, run around the room by ghosts, <laughs> and like a frame later, he's like, ha-ha, I'm in it. In actuality, it's like an hour and a half long process of like, crank. <laughs> hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, you gotta find the hole for the crank. Hold on. There we go. I'm still scared of you, I swear, I swear. And then... <sighs> Like, fiberglass. You think the kids are just like standing there watching? <laughs> right. Like we can still get this they're, guy. They're like, this is the this is the guy who killed us. It's like, like this is we let him kill us. Like this is the man who clocked us. Yeah, right. Like we let this guy. This is the guy. This is him. <laughs> hey, can, can you can you give me a hand here? Can't do it. I have a really hard time doing this one handed. Can you? Got a little clasp in the back. Can you get the clasp in the back? Just seal it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, Susie, can you get over here yeah, real so, quick? Yeah, Fritz, can I get a Fritz? Maybe, maybe the two of you just kind of like help lift it up together. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. Cassie, I know we had had some you know, <laughs> had trials and tribulations, but like you know, right behind the foot here, yeah, little, would you mind being little, able to little thigh <laughs> snap together a thigh? It's really hard to do the snaps with these giant rabbit hands on. I'm sorry. Fine for bludgeoning you, N not a problem there. But uh, yeah, if you could just snap it over there. It's like y'all understand. You've been in these yeah. suits yeah. for a while too. It's tough, right? Yeah. It's crowded. It's cramped. Thanks. Okay, now I'm ready to laugh maniacally. Ha ha ha! And then, literally a second later, it all collapses. Oh, after all that work. <laughs> remove the exoskeleton from the animatronic. Okay, remove the exoskeleton. To put on the. the spring locks too much. Next, you'll need to reattach the fiberglass shell back on. Right, how are, how are you doing? Then, you need like a, you need a team of like 10 people the to do this. Layer. Once applied properly, put on the gloves and feet. Great. Lastly, you'll need to put on the head. Oh, oh, sorry. 
I went in, I'm like, oh, spooky. That seems like, the, but down here, I noticed this thing down here. That's terrifying. The gloves and feet. I don't know what it is. Lastly, you'll need to put on the head. But before what is that? You do, you'll need to put the horrific, head whatever it is. I hate it. I hate it so much. A small socket on the inside of the head to reveal the fake eye. Oh, wild. For you to see. Has anyone been a mascot at, like, Disneyland? Or Disney World, like, Mickey Mouse? Because Mickey Mouse is animatronic, like... I feel like this is about as close to, like, Mickey Mouse, because his mouth moves, and he has the fake eyes, and unlike a normal mascot where you could, like, see the holes punched in his eye, and you can see, like, the guy underneath me, like, what's my break? You know, smoke or whatever, which I imagine all mascotted characters are smokers, because that's, like, the stereotype. Oh, <laughs> that was Mickey the other day. Um, but, like, the Mickey Mouse animatronics at Disneyland, and a lot of their animat not animatronics, their suits are really good at hiding that there's someone inside of them. And so I'd be curious to see how close to reality this is with, like, eye slipping. It's just got to be a mask. It's just got to be a head that you put on, right? But it moves, and the eyes move. It's just really impressive technology. In the event of a spring lock failure, do not panic. Keep as still as possible okay. and call for help. All right, great. Calm your breathing and have a partner wound up the hand crank to lock the spring lock wound them. once more. Then safely and gently remove I'm sorry, I'm impaled right now. I can't really use my hand crank. Oh, oh, oh geez. Hello, hello, Lord Dump. Fredbear jaw upgrade. Oh man, he's gonna butt me. Fredbear's costume was designed with a large jaw to hold all the teeth for a full smile. Unfortunately, that means modifications were needed for the animatronic to function properly. Fredbear animatronic had problems with moving its jaw with all the additional weight. Mmm. Freddy had those weird teeth that I called out. Fred Bear, maybe I haven't noticed. Both animatronics were designed with the intention of having similar features, with Body Bun being the main focus for design. To compensate for Fred Bear's large jaw, we've installed two additional hydraulics on both sides of the animatronic's jaw. Fred Bear is fully cal calibrated and ready to perform again. Oh, here we go. It's the bite. Yeah. <laughs> He's got, he's got those sonic teeth going. Hey, bite victim. Who, who is nameless? Nameless bite victim. Oh man, missing, missing that lobe. We're going in for the crunch. Feed me. Wide, Freddy. I'm so surprised. No, don't feed me to him. I bit someone. <laughs> I bit someone. Hey, give me a favor. Uh, maybe somehow uh, you could check inside those suits a while back. Uh, maybe somehow uh, you could check inside those suits a while back. Uh, so, uh, four tapes hit inside their empty heads. Freddy ripped apart with a smile. Bonnie dancing in the dark. Chica and her wonderful song. Foxy meets the happy man. The happy man! You're gifted, you found the fifth. So each of those... Okay. Michael! There's something I want to show you. Is this Afton? Oh yeah, before your brother died, something else happened. Something was wrong with the suits. Watch. <laughs> this was before your brother died. Let me tell you a secret. Same thing happened to your father. Oh, this is... Henry? 
talking to Michael? Same thing happened to your father. It killed him. Oh, yeah. But only... It, it killed him. But only for a while. <laughs> Michael, they, I'm going to explain this to you in probably the least tactful way possible. Your dad... Not like, hey, your dad's still alive. Or like, hey, he was a killer. Or like, hey, the suit's killed. Like, no, it killed him. But only for a while. I'm going to tell you this weird factoid about, like... There's a way that you order this information when, hey teenage boy or whatever he is 20 year old boy whatever it is at this point it's like there's a order of events where you say hey you know what happened to your father it's incredibly tragic but you might have to brace yourself for this one not oh the animatronics are kind of haunted here's a tape of someone screaming in agony and running that was your dad it killed him but not completely or not forever <laughs> maybe lead off with the stuff about the dad first and then go into the other stuff he's still out there Do you want to find him? Eh, you know. Eh, not particularly. I'm good. Ooh. I'll show you. Look at... This. One part puppet, one part new member of Kiss. <laughs> With his face. Kiss? No? You like classic music? Yeah. Classic rock? You know Kiss? Yeah, of you course. You get the joke? We've talked about this before. I know. I just needed someone in the room. To, to recognize that I, I wasn't just seeing things. No, I recognize you and I acknowledge you. you. I appreciate that. Yeah, of course. Oh, Fred. Fazbear's. Oh, wow. We're, we're hopping through a lot of stuff here. So now we fast forward to Fazbear Fred. Don't worry about times, dates, or locations. That's a message to me. You'll know when it happens. Hello. There will be a gasoline canister in the back, next to the second exit. Your father will be there in the building with you. He will look different, but you will know it's him. Again, Henry, if this is the one who's given the coaching to Michael, he'll look different. Yeah, you'll figure it out. You know what? You'll figure it out. I'm just going to give you, like, the basic surface level stuff. I'll let the rest just kind of solve itself here. Then we can end it. It's not. You're not. He always comes back. End this for good. I know how you feel, Michael. It's a lot of responsibility. But when this is done, we'll be free. You'll be free, too. So is this a puppet coaching me? It may not seem like it. But I believe your brother will forgive you. I have forgiven you, too. You are good, Michael. Huh. So I guess it is uh, the puppet talking and doing this little pep talk. Despite what you might think. You do deserve this happy ending. Thanks. Thanks, puppet. I've been working all this time. I've been working all this time to give you that opportunity. That's nice. I love you, Michael. Oh, wow. That's very nice. Thanks. Thanks, Puppet. Thanks, new member of KISS. Well, folks, it's been a real pleasure having you here tonight. We had to say goodbye, but cheers up and alive tomorrow. And just remember that a friend is the best thing you could ever have. When Bob gets you down, a friend will be there to help. <laughs> yeah, oh, for example, there was this one time I got stuck in a water machine. A friend of mine had a cut a hole in it just to get me out. <laughs> it's interesting that the name of it is non-existent video. So this is the last one, late one night at Fazbear's Frights. Um, it's interesting that it's it's non-existent video. Um, I mean, that could relate to the fact that you have all of these... They, they talk about the four tapes hidden in the different animatronic heads, which reveal the things that we've seen throughout the rest of the series. Like, that is all of FNAF VHS, right? We have this one, this one... 
this one, and then what was the last one? Freddy ripped apart with a smile, Chica. So did we discover them, or like, is this? Did the? I got. I. I mean, I have a lot of questions here, but it seems like what the puppet is teaching us, Michael, how to kind of like redeem ourselves slash like make amends for everything that we did in killing our brother. In the bite of eighty three. Which, again, like, to this day, the fact that the bite of 87, like, what are you doing? There's two bites. This is very clearly the bite. Um, but I know it's technically not based on the dates. But um, something else was wrong with the suits. So they, were, so they were wrong. Before your brother died, something else happened. Something was wrong with the suits. Watch. So... Before your brother died, something was wrong with the suits. Is he referring to this being my dad? Or, like, the, what was wrong with the suits? But Like, that he had corrupted the suits? I'm not exactly sure what that's trying to indicate. And, and maybe I'm just confused about the timeline here or whatever. But it, it is interesting. So, like, okay, so the, then the puppet's teaching me how to make amends and all this. And then I, and then I burn it down. Um, it's nice that the puppet and I are, are such good friends. Uh, the fact that it's non-existent video, though, also makes me think, like, this resolution never happens. Like, the name, at least the way I see it, is like, hey, this is, like, almost the, like, happy, as happy of an ending as this series can get, like, this is the happy ending, but it's non-existent because this never did happen. This is not the ending that we end up getting, right? It, it doesn't come to conclusion. The forgiveness never truly, like, a lot of the pain and regret never really goes away, it doesn't end as successfully as they want because the puppet's like, then he'll be gone and it'll be taken care of forever and we won't have to deal with this anymore, but we do. Hence, non-existent video. That's that's my guess. That's how I would interpret it. I also love how melancholy and, like, bittersweet this, like, ending pan out. It's really good. It's really sad. Because, um, again, just, like, you think about, like, all the tragedy of everything that came before and all the people who have been affected, the families have been affected the Afton family themselves and a lot of the innocents who are affected there. It's, it's really, really impactful. Um, so let's see what this last one is. Late one night at Fazbear's Frights. Because this feels like the end, right? Like, this feels like, oh, we've set it up. Here's the haunted animatronics. We've seen them get haunted. Foxy, go, go, go. Here's the, you know, the first event, the final event. And we're kind of wrapped on, like, the first five, you know, four, four and a half games. Here we go. Oh, hello. Okay, so this is at Fazbear's. Okay, hence the name. At Fazbear's Sprite. Right? So this is him coming at us. Seems like there's a fire going because of the flickering. Is that just the same? He's got a knife in his fingers. It's unclear. Cool. Oh, hello. hello. Hello, small child. In in Fazbear Frights? What are you what are you doing here? You shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be here. This building's burning down. And other stuff. Let's probably, let's probably get out. Huh. Purple! After an alert. Oh, this is Fazbear Fright, like haunted house style. Oh, Oh yeah, he's got the knife and everything. Oh, this is cool, man. I mean, this is like, ooh, straight ripped out of a haunted house setup. This is cool. Don't do it. Ooh, hello. Oh! Oh! That was great. That was great. That was really cool. That was great. What a great series. That was unreal. That ending. That ending jump scare, man. <laughs> hey, it's my face! My face is in here!
And the puppet? Why is the puppet? Just because there's still unfinished business, maybe? It does look like upgraded puppet. Um, why was there a kid at... Fazbear's? Why? Who's this? Who's this? Why are you here? What are you doing, you small child? You fool, get out of there. This is also much too mature of a, of a thing for you. This is not okay. Cool, man. This is great. I love it. This is wonderful. Clap and a half. What a what a wonderful, wonderful series. Um and again, I I love for as hard of a time as I give the franchise and the books and whatever, I I love the world that it's created. And and I think people now are having a harder time as the world has gotten more and more sci-fi and like out there with some of the, the, the newer stuff. And I, I understand why, right? It started as murders and hauntings. And now it's gone into like sci-fi techno goos and things. It's like it's, it's, it's go AR and VR and like the, leaning into the technological like sound illusion discs and stuff, which don't hate the messenger, but they're back. And, and the new book really kind of leans into the sound illusion discs pretty heavily. But this is cool because it goes back to like, I mean, really the visceral horror that this is. It's like it's a dirty old pizza restaurant that we've all been to with these old beat, beat up animatronics and just like one crazy guy who, for whatever reason, feels the urge to just like pick off these kids and, and the horrific things. And I love the world that it's built and I love seeing other creators and other artists' interpretations, whether it's games, whether it's it's stuff like this, interpretations of this world, because it, it, it gives you such a different perspective on the events that we're witnessing of the events that we're kind of, like, like living through, right? Like, I've never, again, like, I've lightly thought about, like, what Fazbear Frights would feel like or what it looks like, and, and the games give you a sense of that, but the games don't it the the games feel like an old warehouse right that are just it's it's messy it's not really organized in any sort of way whereas this is like oh this is a haunted house like this is what a horror attraction fazbear frights would actually look like with you know something behind you know glass and there's doors and there's long hallways and stuff this feels more in line with it and it gives me a new context as to what that would be it's cool and and so watching this stuff a lot of times gives me new perspectives on the franchise as i look back on it um or as I look at, like, the new stuff that's getting released. So, across the board, just wonderful. Uh, this was actually tremendous. Uh, so, again, congratulations to Baddington once again for doing just an, an amazing, amazing series uh, and being so talented at uh, all the stuff that he's releasing on his channel. If you have not subscribed to Baddington, yes, this is Fazbear Frights. Uh, this is the uh, Five Nights at Freddy stuff that he's done. Um but please go check out Harmony and Horror. We will be hopping back into reacting to that at some point. But, I mean, if you are looking for a creator who's who's doing really awesome stuff in this kind of, like, creepy analog horror storytelling world, phenomenal. So uh, please uh, show that channel some love. Uh, support the, the projects that they're working on, FNAF-related and otherwise. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Ash, anything from you as we close things out? Uh, that was really good. Awesome. Thank you. So I, I don't know. I saw you moving over there and I'm like, oh, maybe Ash wants to say something. Well, I think that there's, um, he's done like security breach tapes as well. What? Yeah, I think There so. are more? There are more. Well, it seems like there was a little bit of a uh, situatino between uh, Baddington. <laughs> a situatino. <laughs> yeah. You, you might even call it a situatissimo. Ooh, like fortissimo. Yeah. That's the big one. <laughs> yeah. Situatinio. Okay, well. So he had to go and do more of his own okay. thing. But, yeah, there's more. All right. There's more. Well, there you go. I thought we were done. I thought this was great. Well, stay tuned for more, ladies and gentlemen, as Spoopy Month continues. You know, Spooky Ghost behind me says, boo, spooky. So get ready, friends. So in the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video video for you. Stay scared. Don't don't stay scared. That actually is sad. Stay happy, but allow yourself to light scares every once in a while.